Hey, welcome to the unit on measurement. And uh, why would we want to measure stuff? Well, obviously we want to see whether something like this fits in a shed or other things like that. And look around this screen, what a mess. I've got here all the sort of old measurements and new measurements that are in use around the world. And let's have a look over here at this one. This goes back to Roman times where they used a cubit as a measure of length. Hey, there's something wrong with that. I think, how consistent would this be between people? You're measuring as your basic unit the length from the elbow to the top of the small finger. That may not be very consistent. It might depend on the age of the person, the size of the person, all sorts of things there. It's a bit of a mess, isn't it, using that. And then horses were measured in how many hands high they were. And a hand was exactly as it suggests, the distance from the top of the thumb to the uh, middle, uh, to the small finger. The depth of a hand, I suppose. And then it, the, the height of the horse was not taken to the top of the horse. Actually, this is wrong here. It should be a little bit lower down here. It's at, at what we call the withers of the horse, where this bone comes here. It's sort of a shoulder like a shoulder in there so uh, that's how we measure the size of horses and it's in hands and obviously is this going to be consistent no so uh, we've got to estimate a hand or or say how how wide is a hand and actually and we'll come to that in a minute a hand i think is taken as about four inches um and that that's the unit they use for measuring horses down here we've got the old what's called the empirical system imperial sorry imperial system here um started in england in about the 19th century 1800 somewhere there 12 inches is one foot three feet is one yard 1760 yards in a mile oh boy this is a mess too many numbers to remember and then thank goodness for the metric system where we have a little bit more consistency everything is metric uh, meaning it's a decimal system actually so everything is in units of 10 or multiples of 10 so one meter is 100 centimeters or and there's 10 centimeters in 10 millimeters in a centimeter so it's all in multiples of 10 rather than over here down the bottom here again 12 3 1760 oh boy that is a mess so let's have a look at where we're going in the world today with measurement and see uh, if we can get con some consistency there. All right, so come on down and let's have a look at the history of things and where we're going now. Now, obviously, we've always wanted to measure things to describe how big they are, uh, distance between two towns, give people an idea of how long it's going to take to get there, the amount of grain produced, its weight, uh, weight of rare metals or the time of the day lots of measurements here and uh, the Romans uh, way back here uh, tried to start to uh, measure distance with a pace the length of a footstep and of course that's going to vary from person to person so a Roman mile was a thousand paces or about 1480 metres uh, that a mile these days is about 1600 meters okay between the two systems um, a mile is the uh, imperial system um okay and then a cubic mentioned that before was the uh, uh that distance there from the elbow to the fingertip noah's ark from biblical times is supposed to be 300 cubits long so i don't know what's that how far would that be i, I reckon um this cubit in today's metric system would be what maybe about 500 something like that 500 um, millimeters 50 centimeters let's put in centimeters 50 centimeters maybe i don't know be approximately so 300 cubits would be about 150 meters long noah's ark Mm, don't know and a Goliath again from biblical times was six cubits and a span high don't know what a span is six cubits then uh, it'd be six lots of 50 centimeters 
so the dude would be about three metres tall. So that's pretty gigantic, yes. Um, something like that. So you can see our problem. All different systems. It's a bit messy. So we're going to have a look at the current systems uh, um, that we've got now. Early measurements were not uniform and were therefore unreliable. Not uniform. A cubit measured on what sort of person? Uh, unreliable, therefore. Inconsistent. Unreliable. Um, oh, here's a palm width. A palm width is a span. Length of a foot, length of a cubit. So uh, in 1588, Queen Elizabeth ordered a set of standard weights and measures to be made. And that was the origin of the imperial system. The imperial system, OK. And that spread around the world quite a bit. But there, there's another one uh, a bit easier to use these days, metric system, as you know. Here's a little uh, picture here of the special headquarters in London for the people uh, responsible for working out weights and measures weights and measures make sure that people were dealing with each other consistently in how much you know gold or a grain or whatever was being sold they had to have some basic unit so it gives you an idea doesn't it of where it's all coming from let's have a look now at that first set of um, units imperial units and what a mess they were uh, length was in miles, yards, feet and inches and as you saw there were 12 inches and a foot, 3 feet and a yard, oh what a mess and weight was in tons, pounds and ounces and money was in pounds, shillings and pence now uh, actually the United States and Canada I think also uh, still have miles, yards, feet and inches um, and pounds and ounces I think uh, they certainly have the imperial system for the length um, so it's still a bit of a mixed world out there so look at this now 12 inches is one foot and three feet make a yard and 1760 yards make a mile so you can start to see why this is a messy system too many different units here and with different numbers connecting them not like the metric system where there's units of 10 10 millimeter make a centimeter and so on 100 centimeters make a, a meter all right so 16 ounces equals one pound 2240 pounds equals a ton what a mess here are the relationships between the imperial units and the current metric metric units that we use okay so they're also very messy <coughs> numbers to convert between systems but necessary if you're dealing with somebody in the United States and you want to um, ship out so many kilograms of material you'll have to convert that to pounds and tons in the American way all right let's have a look at see if we can do some conversions there here's the first one just as I was suggesting somebody wants to uh, make masks for, for, for yachts using a strong alloy uh, in 2008 he receives a large order from the United States and they want it 13 yards long and weighing 154 pounds so you're going to have to do some conversions 13 yards we have to go back up here let's just tidy this up now so it's not so messy to read uh, here so 13 uh, was it 13 yards long so we come in here three feet oh a yard is about that so you're going to have to use that one yard to make it into uh, centimeters and then multiply by 13 that sort of thing Okay, do some conversions. So it is necessary to know your units for around the world. There are two main systems still operating, the imperial and the metric. All right, I'll leave you with taking this table and trying to do these three problems down here. I think there are three of them. Size 2A, there we are. Okay, so just to get an idea. All right, pause the presentation. I'll show you the answers. Uh, after you've had a go so here we are here are the answers to A there and uh, just check check that you were able to uh, convert those to, uh, into the right units all right let's have a look now at the metric system and that's probably an easier system to use and more uh, used around the world than the imperial system 
and it's way based on a decimal system so that's uh, bundles of 10 10 um, units here okay decimal system why is that well 0 0.1 implies one tenth doesn't it 0 0.01 is one hundredth so that's its connection to the de why it's called the decimal system multiples of 10 okay in 1966 Australia changed introducing the dollar 100 cents in the dollar rather than 20 shillings in a pound and all that stuff and then uh, during the 70s we've gone to the worldwide standard of the metric system um, and many other countries did too except the United States hasn't done that okay metric or SI system of units also can be called MKS uh, system um, meters kilograms seconds although the basic units are these for length it's a meter uh, for mass or weight it's a gram and for time it's a second okay uh, we still have problems with time don't we there's uh, 60 seconds in a minute okay and um, then uh, minutes um, you've got to change to hours and uh, days in terms of hours they're not units of 10 so uh, that's a little bit different there 60 seconds in a minute 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day so that's not quite uh, the metric system uh, there as so well, it's a metric system but it's not a decimal system is it you've still got these different numbers to concern can concern yourself with let's have a look at the uh, units here for other things capacity liters uh, large weights tons area is square meters cubic meters meters per second force is newtons joules is energy and watts is power we don't actually have to deal with these so much just in the mathematics of it but certainly in physics and science in general we'd want to know how to convert those to other systems okay well we've got a decimal system what's going to happen now then well let's come up and look at the idea and that is that we've got some set prefixes prefix means before pre beforehand pre-game preparations uh, all right so giga it could be a gigabyte or it could be um, um, gigagrams could be anything if you put this in front of it you mean one billion lots of whatever the base unit is so gigabytes a million bytes of storage there mega one million okay so th th we're seeing here with the metric system a very consistent idea that you can just use these words and immediately you know how many lots of the base unit you've got you don't have to remember things like 12 inches and a foot three feet in a yard and all that sort of stuff okay then you've got the smalls centi is one hundredth all in decimals hundreds powers of 10 okay milli is one thousandth micro is one millionth and a nano is one billionth so it's a handy consistent system okay so here's some, some length conversions down here one meter is a hundred centimeters but then there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter so it's a thousand millimeters and that's one thousandth of a kilometer or doing it the other way, a kilometre is a thousand metres and multiply it by what? How many centimetres in a metre? It's a hundred. So just put some more zeros on the end. Very handy, isn't it? Working in powers of ten. Just count up the zeros type idea. One centimetre is ten millimetres, which is a hundredth of a metre, because there's a hundred centimetres in a metre. So it's all powers of ten okay in our decimal system the metric system and it's consistent very nice system to work with okay well let's have a look at a consequence of that what might you want to do well I don't know have you ever seen this on your calculator when you're doing big numbers a million times two and a half million what's this well the calculator got tired and didn't want to put a whole lot of zeros right across the screen 
So it's using a, 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 a scientific notation. Well, in calculator land, this is a technology way of saying this number is big. It's actually 2.5. E stands for exponential or power. And it's a power of 10. So it's saying the number is so large, you've got to take the 2.5, that's the number between 1 and 10, and then multiply it by exponential 10, 10 to the 12. So you actually need to shift the decimal place from there 12 places. So that's going to be 2, 5 with 11 zeros on the end, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Not 12 zeros because you have to move that. Multiplying by 10 means shifting the decimal place one to the right. 2.5 times 10 is 25. So you use one of your um, 12 zeros or powers of 10 to get to here and then there will be 11 here. So it's the same as all these tacked on the end of that. Multiplying by uh, that many, uh, that power of 10, 10 to the 6, it's going to take it out there. Do you get the idea? Hey, this is pretty convenient. This is our shorthand way of representing a large number, and it's called scientific or standard notation. You don't write down lots of zeros takes up too, mo too much room uh, technology wise across the screen because most um, uh, answers with technology are given a 10 digit display only. Please note that this is a technology version tech only don't put that on a mathematical answer but we actually have it like this where we actually explain it's 10 to the 12 not E plus 12. Okay. You might have seen that on your calculator. Now you know what, what's happening there. All right. So let's have a look. And we've just talked about this. Very large numbers can be written using scientific notation or standard form. So instead of all that, you'll write it as a number between 1 and 10 times a power of 10. So here, 2. It's not 2. Is it? It's got all the zeros on the end. If you count them up, there's 25 of them. What about very small numbers? Something like this. That's just as messy. So you start with a number between 1 and 10. There it is, 7.0. And how many places do you have to move it back here? So you would count the 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16. But we're starting with 7, so 17. And it's neg 17. A negative power means what? 1 over 10 to the 17, which implies you'll be dividing by 10 to the 17. So that means move 17 places backwards to the left, making the number smaller. Okay, so the negative means you're moving to the left or dividing. So it's a very convenient way of writing very large and very small numbers. Excellent stuff. Okay, now what we're going to do, because we're only working with a metric system, let's, let's practice using this notation for a start now. So here we are. I'll give you a little idea. This, these screen, screen clippings are from Hayes and Harris Publications here. Here, you know, did you know that light travels very quickly? Okay, and in a year, light year, you, you've heard that this star is so many light years away. In, in other words, it's so far away that it takes the light that many years to travel. And uh, how many uh, meters does light travel in one year? Well, I don't know, but it's uh, when you turn on a light, it's virtually seen instantaneously, even a long distance away. So it travels very fast. Many, many metres per second. And then if you multiply by how many seconds in an hour, um, seconds in a minute, minutes in an hour, uh, hours in a day, and then do 365 days, you've got how many metres of light would travel in a year. And there it is. It's a big number. But hey, if we come down here and say, put the decimal there, number between 1 and 10, times a power of 10, then that's a neat way 
of writing it without all these zeros. What about over here for a little one? Uh, 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 the radius of a single atom. A single atom, its radius is very, very small in terms of metres. So let's write it more neatly. Let's put a number between 1 and 10, which is 5.304, and then we have to shift the decimal place, all these. So how many zeros? 3, 6, 9, 10, but back from there, 11, 10 to the minus 11. Notice it's negative because you're talking about a very small number. You're moving the decimal to the left, okay, or dividing by that power of 10. Negative, remember, means in exponent or power land, 1 over 10 to 11, which implies you're dividing by 10 to 11. You're going to need to move the decimal to the left 11 places. Let's do some examples now of those and see what you can think of here. So scientific notation is a formal statement. Some number uh, times 10 to some other number. And these are all just whole numbers here, so don't get too worried about all this mathematics here for this course. Uh, n is between 1 and 10, so we're saying it's the number between 1 and 10 times the power of 10. And here's, here's the example here that we said before. So 2.5 is your n value, if you like, the number between 1 and 10, and that's your power of 10. Okay. So that's all. It's formally a formal statement there. Don't get confused with that. Let's look at our example that I was going to do with you here. So write this number in scientific notation. So first of all, come in and put the decimal between the first two, so it's a number between 1 and 10. So they are saying that's n, the number between 1 and 10. And then you've got to move it across all these places until you've got this many decimals. Now, how many places is that? 3, 6, no, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15. So let's move 15 places to the right. So it'll be multiplying by 10 to the 15. So that's our nice, uh, neat description of this rather ugly-looking big number. OK. What about trying another one, a small? Let's do some smalls here. I just come up here. Uh, okay, so write this number in scientific notation. So go to the number, put the decimal there, so it's a number between 1 and 10. Then you've got to work out how many places to shift the decimal back. Well, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14. So it's moved 14 places to the left. So therefore, it's to the left. You're dividing, it's 10 to the minus 14. This is a very small number. The negative power of 10. Now, 4.62 is really already done, isn't it? Uh, it's a number between 1 and 10, so it doesn't have a power of 10. So we put 4.62 by 10 to the naught. And 10 to the naught, if you remember your power rules, any uh, base except 0 to the raised to the 0 is 1. So 4.62 in Teco language has, has a standard form of 4.62 by 10 to the north. OK, are you ready? Uh, come and do some for yourself here. I've got a few little problems here from Hayes and Harris, um, and you could follow them in your textbook. OK, so have a look. Uh, first of all, questioning, is it in the standard form? A standard form, remember, is a number between... 1 and 10 times a power of 10. Okay, easiest way of thinking of it simply. All right, so just check that out. Okay, have a look at those uh, four. I'll uh, show you the rest of the questions and then the answers are below. So pause the presentation, have a go. Uh, let's have a look at five. What have we got? Five, six, seven, and eight. Have a go there. And I think we've got a couple more, just nine there. We'll just go up a little bit here. Oops. Come down here again. Okay, we'll just go down to nine. And then we'll have a look at the answers. <clears throat> Come down to the answers now. And just check your work. Uh, nine questions there. So have, a, have a go. See what you think. Go back over it. Okay, discuss it. 
and uh, master scientific notation. You probably have seen this before. All right, let's go on and have a look at uh, the uh, use of the calculator here. So as I've said to you, big numbers, the exponent of 10 means a power of 10, 10 to some power, and if it's a small number, 52 divided by uh, 2.5 million, then uh, it's going to be a negative power. Okay, so you're dividing by that many, uh, that power of 10, 10 to the fifth. So you're going to shift the decimal place to the left. Okay, so that 2.08, let's just do that one. This would be 2.08 by 10 to the minus 5. Mathematically, we don't use the technology symbol there. Now we need to move the decimal 5 to the left, so let's do it here. So we've got 2. 2.08 2.08 and we're going to move the decimal 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5 so this represents 2.08 move back it's going to be uh, 1 place 2, 3, 4 and 5 Okay, so there's four, four zeros in front of it. The first of the five is used up in moving to there. Okay, so that's our answer then, would be 0 0.0000208. Okay, right, so here, uh, let's get used to that, taking a display from the calculator and writing it in standard notation, remember, we don't use this in mathematics, that technology, we interpret it with a power of 10. So have a go at these uh, problems here, there are 13 of them there, and you're going to use your calculator to do the calculations here, and then interpret your answer. Okay, come down, give you the last couple there, and I'll show you the answers in a minute. Now I put this table here because these last two problems start to use mega and nano. So you're going to have to go to the table to try and look up and remember what those prefixes mean. Megalitres, megabytes, same idea. What, how many lots of the base unit are you working with there? Nice consistent system. Okay, have a go and I'll show you the answers. Here we are. There are answers to uh, that uh, last set there uh, on the calculator. All right, one little bit to go, and I hope you're getting familiar with the metric system. Very consistent uh, and nice system to work with. All right, so here we are, um, conversion of units. Now, obviously, we have some key words here. Kilo means a thousand of the base unit. Centi means a hundredth of the base unit and milli means a thousandth of the base unit no matter whether it's in um, litres or metres or whatever um, those prefixes are the same and relate back to the basic unit so a kilo you have a thousand of the base unit so you multiply by a thousand and then you would get uh, what this could be um, metres a kilometre, a thousand metres, and then you multiply by a hundred to get centimetres, and then multiply by ten to get millimetres. So if you're going from large, oh, let's call them biggies, I like calling them biggies, bigs to smalls, each time you're going to get more. Okay, and so more smalls for every big, so you will multiply. Okay, now coming back the other way from these smalls over here, so what we got now is smalls going to bigs. Now, smalls going to bigs, if you've got a, you need a lot of smalls to make a big. Okay, so you're going to have less bigs, aren't you? Because you're bundling them up. Your 10 millimetres make one centimetre. So you're going to have to divide because you're going to have less 
bigs from the smalls. I want you to think of it that way. This conversion uh, diagram here is okay. I don't want you to use it mechanically though. I want you to see what's going on there. You know, the idea that if you've got big ones uh, you're go and going to small ones, you're going to have more smalls. And you're going to therefore have to multiply to get that larger number of smalls. Okay, think about that. We're going to work on that now. Okay, length conversions, same thing. A one metre is 100 centimetres. Talked about this before. 10 millimetres in a centimetre multiplied by 10. Then if you want to change that to um, kilometres, it's one thousandth of a kilometre. Same idea here. Kilo, unit, centi, milli. Okay, using those prefixes. So this little dude here has said what I've said up above. When changing from smaller to larger, you have to divide. You'll have less bigs, which will imply divide. If you're going from larger to smaller, you'll have more smalls, and that implies times. So try to think of it like that. Are you going to have more or less? Are you going to multiply or divide? Okay, come and let's practice now. And here's a, a good example. Okay, we're going to do two conversions. Meters to centimeters. First decision, ah, this is large, large to small, or bigs to smalls. Okay, you're going to have more. So we will times by 100, because what the book doesn't put here is you want more of the small units. You know you're going to have more, so there's going to be that many small units. Smaller to large now. Let's look at this. This is smalls to bigs. Okay, you're going to have less bigs, therefore you divide. Okay, so first of all, there are two stages in this one. Now look out for this. Centimetres can't be directly converted to kilometres. We will go centimetres and divide by 100 to get how many bigs. That's metres. And then we've got to divide by 1,000 to get the real bigs, which is um, kilometres. So you can do it all like this or do it in two stages if you want. So you're dividing by a total of, what, 10 to the 5th there. Or multiplying by 10 to the minus 5. So the 5 zeros, so this is going to have to go back 5 places and it's going to end up in the front there. So this metric system with the powers of 10 is handy to use. You don't really need a calculator because dividing by 10 to the 5th or multiplying by 10 to the minus 5 tells you 5 places that way because it's a decimal system. It means you can shift your powers of 10 easily by shifting your, or using your powers of 10, by shifting your decimal place. Every decimal place is one power of 10. Handy, isn't it? Okay, let's do some practice. Here we go. I want you to try these four problems and uh, see what you think of, uh, think of them. So you're thinking, am I going from bigs to smalls and if I am I've got to multiply by the factor or am I going from smalls trying to form big ones and if that's the case I've got to divide by the factor so you do need to know your factors centies and millies and things that's important and then uh, you can do the conversion quite easily alright pause the presentation have a go and I'm going to show you the answers now Okay, so here they are. Uh, see how you went with that. You might have to go back and check some of those. Remember your smalls and bigs. Remember that process. Think it through. Okay, let's go on. We've got one more little section to do in this uh, introductory unit to measurement now. Okay, and we're going to do mass. Well, it's the same thing, isn't it? Uh, well, one ton, you don't, maybe you don't know, there's a thousand kilograms. One kilogram is a thousand grams. One gram is a thousand milligrams. So uh, these are our common units that we use. And again, we've got the same idea of a conversion diagram. We've got tons uh, going to kilograms. This is the big unit going to smalls. So we will multiply. Another big unit going to the next smallest. Multiply. Then this is a bigger unit than millies. You're going to have a thousand and so times it. Coming back the other way, packaging it up. Smalls into bigs. So we will divide. 
Grams into kilograms. Smalls into bigs. We're going to divide. Kilograms into tons. Smallers into bigs. Divide. Okay. So let's have a look at an example of this then. 2.3 kilograms to grams. This is bigs to smalls. So what we're going to do is times. What is the factor? Kilo. Oh, that's a thousand. So it's 2.3 by a thousand. It's 2300 grams. What about grams to tons? This is smalls going to bigs. So we're going to have to divide. But we've got two stages because we usually connect grams to kilograms and then we go from kilograms to tons. Notice the spelling in the metric system of uh, tons is T-O-N-N-E-S, said tons. In the imperial system, it's T-O-N-S, and that's tons. Usually a little bit of difference there. Okay, so let's do grams to kilograms. This is smalls to bigs. We're going, it's kilo, we're going to divide by a thousand. There's our first calculation. And then we want, again, relatively smalls, kilograms to tons, uh, smalls to bigs, divide by a thousand. So there's two dividing by thousands which is, let's do it without the calculator, let's take this, dividing by um, six zeros if you like. One, two, three, four, five, six, it goes in there, 8.47, even without a calculator. You can use calculator if you wish, but the metric system is beautiful, it's a decimal system, easy to handle those decimals. Okay, let's have a look at some for you, uh, five, six and seven, uh, having a little bit of conversions there, and I'll give you the answers. So pause it, have a go, and let's have a look at the answers. Okay, there they are. All right. Hope you're going okay. We're going to finish off with measuring devices and their accuracy. Just talking about um, measurement. We're talking about the units, what we might use. But how accurate, how accurate can our measurement be? Let's have a look at a ruler here. What's the smallest division? The accuracy has to do with the smallest division on the measuring device. The smallest division unit. And what are they? Do you know? Well, one millimetre usually on a ruler like this. So we have uh, here 10 millimetres here and that makes a centimetre distance. Okay, so... Uh, that's the idea, and this, this ruler, it's upside down here, is um, 300 millimetres long or 30 centimetres. Okay, whichever way you like to think of it. Okay, same idea. All right, so the accuracy provided by that ruler is to the nearest millimetre because you can't actually really measure between those scale units, you'd be guessing. All right, let's have a look at some other ones. Reading measuring instruments. Now, a lot of what's coming up here might be, super, might be superseded because many devices now are digital. Okay, it gives a digital readout, like your watch, for example. You don't ha actually have to look and read it off as such. Okay, and one, uh, one device which uh, uses uh, dials like we've got here is an electricity meter and water meters. And uh, each of these dials uh, works in a different way. This one's going that way, and this one's going back the other way. And the reason for that is they work on a cog system. As power is used, a they're supposed to be cogs. This is turning around according to how much water is pushing uh, through it through, through an impeller. And over on this side, you'll have cogs here and on this side on a different ratio you will have another set of cogs so as this turns it drives this one down and so this is going to turn but on the other side it will turn the other way okay so when you have a system like that you've got these funny different arrows up the top here of these dials so let's try and read it let's ring read the ten thousands is there is just over one ten thousand. So here we've got one lot of ten thousand. Now 
this little gap in here past 10,000 we can pick up here and we find it's over halfway it's 5,000 one lot of 5,000 and then the hundreds is past 5,000 by how many hundreds we'll go to the hundreds and it's 600 one by 600 and then how far past 600 is it go to the tens <coughs> it's 60 1 by 60 all powers of 10 good system decimal system here and then we go to the last one how far past 60 it's 8 I'm uh, oh, sorry 6 sorry, there's no. so it's 1 by 8 so the overall reading is 15668 oops I've read that incorrectly have I oh yes the second one here the second one the thousands I've read as five I've only got four and a bit okay you always go to the lower value because it's four plus a bit and then you pick up how many bits with the um, smaller unit dials over there okay so the idea is that you always read between the two numbers using the smallest number and then look to the next dial to get the idea now this is a cog driven system so what, what we're saying here is they go in different directions um, when they're driven and so you've got to read them backwards and forwards okay now obviously you can make mistakes reading this off and you know, like I did and so they often now have digital readouts okay so uh, somebody just has to scan it and get the digital readout however let's have a look at reading the such devices because it's interesting enough and here are some devices uh, I don't know uh, whether you'll be able to do this they don't have, have the answers in the back as such for, the, for this one because it's uh, pretty hard to interpret what they are maybe this would be something to discuss with your classmates and your teachers consider these measuring instruments do you know what they are even um, uh, see if you can uh, fill in the table down here um, copy and complete if you can they don't actually have answers for this one so this is really discussion some of them uh, are c clearly measuring jugs and stuff you could work that out but it's worthwhile discussing all right so uh, just come up here a little bit and pause presentation have a go um, then come down and we'll just finish those off and maybe try and do a table a bit hard for some of these maybe just discussion all right let's go down and have a look at the next question then some dials for you to read in uh, two and three uh, four four is the important one isn't it uh, fuel on your car don't like to see that go down that's expensive stuff mate so um, but anyway practice reading these uh, find the fraction of fuel remaining so the fraction is going to be what the uh, number of divisions of fuel left in the tank divided by the total number of divisions on the dial so uh, if it's half full and you've got eight divisions that means four out of eight and we'll give you about half full so you need to count up the divisions there um, and and trying to read off scales up this one up uh, here you have to estimate sometimes right because the smaller scale unit uh, is the big unit there and it's somewhere in between so you might have to estimate that all right have a go um, let's come down and finish those off there are the, uh, some more um, fuel dials and uh, speedometers okay pause it have a go and I'll show you the answers here we go first five problems there how did you do uh, some of that had to be estimated all right let's move on the last little bit now you're going well so hang on in there let's have a look at reading some dials here a tachometer measures the number of revolutions of the motor of the engine thousands of revolutions per minute so you've got to multiply by a thousand so find the speed of the engine we've got to read this dial here so we can see it's three and there's one two three four divisions to a unit so each of those divisions is 0.25 or a quarter of a unit so 
where is it now I'll just get rid of that oops hang on uh, just try and get rid of that now so coming back from that little glitch there let's have a look now at this is therefore exactly on a quarter unit well it appears to be so it's 3250 the idea of a quarter being as I said before 0.25 of 1000 because these are in thousand revs per minute how fast the motor's going okay so uh, how did you go with that reading that let's see if you can do some now and here are some tachometers in your vehicle whatever that might be whatever sort of vehicle you've got there so and there's some thermometers there trying to estimate okay between units or between scale units on the device so it's pretty important isn't it if you're going to have these sorts of um, machines or um, measuring devices rather than digital okay have a go um, I hope you've enjoyed this I'll show you the answers now um, here they are and that ends this presentation have a look through hope you had some success there and uh, there'll be more uh, presentations on measurement so I'll catch you then cheers for now